Hi everybody, welcome back to Daisy Frostline Sakal New Winter Map and my first impressions review. Look how beautiful this looks. Um, I'm actually at the airfield on Sakal, which is, if you remember rightly, back uh, in the 10 year anniversary um, sort of trailer that Daisy did. This was how they uh, gave us a teaser about Sakal. They showed us the airfield with the number 35 on it, I think it was, with the Yellow King catching a snowflake. And so I've made my way here. Um, and so this is based, this review, this first impressions is based off playing the game for several hours. I've had three lives. My first life was really just a run around and get to the top of the volcano and have a look around life. The next one was more of a serious attempt, but I managed to die of, um, I think I died of starvation i think but on this third life where i've kind of got an idea of what i should be doing um i've lasted for i don't know three or four hours something like that and i'm kitted up really kind of for the end game um you know to keep on surviving so as you can see i've got a nice big backpack i've got good high quality gear to keep me warm a nice hat it's all in good condition i've got um rags i've got torches i've got batteries i've got rope i can make a fishing rod for example i've got a cooking pot full of water i've got chelating tablets to purify the water um yeah about the only thing i'm missing is tetracycline i've got a saiga for pvp uh combat um close range i've got a longhorn for for hunting and long range pve combat and i've got a nice barb wire baseball bat for hitting zombies um, and I've got to say, it, this is really good. Okay, this is a very, very nice map. Um, it looks very, very nice. Remember, I'm playing on PC, not playing on, on console because it's not out on console yet. And everything seems to run nice and smooth. Um, let's have a look at my settings. So, what I'm on, I've got almost everything on high. Um, I've got a, a RTX 3070. Um, nvidia graphics card you know which is okay isn't it i think i mean it all runs smooth i only ever run it at 60 frames a second anyway um for, for capture purposes but everything looks good everything looks smooth and um the layout and the build of the map um is really nice um now whether this is better than chernerus we won't really i can't really say yet but I can probably say this is a more enjoyable map to play than Livonia. Um, because there's an awful lot of verticality to the map. There's the big volcano that we probably all know about in the middle. But there's lots of other mountains to, to have a look around. Which means that although the land mass, mass might be a little bit smaller in the middle. The overall size of the, the ground you're covering. Because you're going up and down. Um, is 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 pretty large um, and also then you've got the ice flows that are outside you've got the boats to travel them we've got the various outlying islands it's much harder to survive on this um for beginners um, because you've got this extra mechanic of being very very cold and the water being and water and food being frozen so you have to prioritize heat so what that means is when you first start playing what you're going to be doing is you're going to be crafting a torch you know with a bandage and a, uh, some rags and a stick um, and you're going to be lighting that to keep you warm as you run around looking for food and as you're looking for better gear and as you find that sort of stuff you know, you're going to be defrosting the food and you're going to be defrosting the drinks um, and then you're going to be eating going on that way so there's these extra steps that you've got to keep an eye on you know you need to keep an eye on your, your overall temperature are you getting colder and that, that's really interesting for if you're a pve player like myself if you play daisy basically for the adventure which which i do so that that's that's really really good so i've got to say you know full stop this seems like an excellent map uh, up there with chernerus the gameplay is nice it looks beautiful um, and the extra gameplay mechanics are, are really good so it's kind of a no-brainer um, in terms of you know is this a good product absolutely the other thing you're obviously going to ask yourself is is it worth the money because it's going to be about 25 pounds i think it's about 26 dollars isn't it 26 euros and i think that's a question you've got to really answer for yourself i can't really say that um but you need to i would say if you could balance a few things that might be good if you compare the price to the price of the game it's it's quite expensive isn't it um and also if you can compare it with the price of things like um existing uh, Bohemian Interactive DLCs. If you take like the Prairie Fire DLC for Armour 3, which is much, much bigger in terms of what it brings to the game. You now, this is nowhere near as big as that. Um, however, 
if you take it on terms of the fact that say you bought Daisy five years ago and that's all you've ever spent on Daisy. Maybe you bought the Livonia DLC, Livonia DLC, or you've you've played it off of Xbox or PC Game Pass, and you've never paid money directly into Daisy. Then maybe that's something that you can think about. And say, well, actually, what you're doing by buying this is you're actually supporting the devs. It's a bit like a Kickstarter, because undoubtedly, if this is a great success then what will that mean is that Bohemian Interactive will know that it's worth investing in more uh, developers to make more maps for DayZ. And if they take this route of taking an existing um, map, which this is, you know, Tanoa for Armour 3, not a particularly well-known one, and then using that as a basis for a DayZ map, I think that's absolutely fine um, and absolutely well worth doing. So that's it really, I think. I think if you really enjoy playing Daisy and you spend an awful lot of time playing Daisy and you want to support the devs, although the price might be a little bit expensive, I think it's definitely a price worth paying. Um, we're gonna have to wait to see how the game performs on console you know, to, to, re to really know whether you know, it drops to like 10 FPS and it doesn't work well on PlayStation 4s and Xboxes. Uh, but as long as it runs okay, then this is going to be going to be a no-brainer. If you're a more casual Daisy player and don't play it very often, and maybe play it for the PvP and not the survival, then maybe think again, and maybe this is something that you know you'll pass on until it goes into a sale, because it is very unforgiving. When we get community servers and people you know turn up the temperature and turn up the loot, then you know it's going to be a fascinating map to play on because of the verticality. Um, but until then, when it's just on vanilla, you know, it's very, very tough. But for me, it's a big thumbs up. Um, well done, the devs, for making what they've done. Maybe not so well done for the marketing team or the management team who made the decisions on how this launch went because I don't think it was handled particularly well in the way that they kind of poo-pooed Xbox and PlayStation players and didn't even have something like a, a dev stream or something like that, um, which, is, uh, which is disappointing. But the actual map itself and the gameplay and the survival mechanics, yeah, top-notch stuff. Highly recommended if you're a big DayZ fan when it comes out. If you're on PC, you know, just buy it. If you're on console, wait for the first console gameplay reviews just to make sure it runs properly. Um, and then it's going to be and buy it then. Okay, that's enough from me. What do you think, though? Put your questions and comments down below. And, of course, I'll see you again soon.